One of the oldest concepts in cinematography is the use of contrast ratios. And now that we have the EL zone system, it is easier than it has ever been to monitor those ratios. Today, we're going to look at seven modern references. And because of the lighting ratios, all of them have their own distinct look. There are two main deciding factors on which contrast ratio you should choose, and they are location and the mood of your scene. Now, if you are completely new to this, the contrast ratio is literally just the difference between the amount of light hitting your key side versus the fill side. Luminance versus shadow. It's just important to remember that every time you increase your light by one stop, it doubles the brightness. For instance, a light fixture that is set to an F2 is twice as bright as one that's set to a 1.4. Possessing very little knowledge of the game. So let's start at the beginning with this right here, contrast ratio one to one, an equal amount of light on both sides. In regards to lighting, this is what we call a flat image. A perfect real world example of this is from the hit Apple TV show, Ted Lasso. Here you'll see as we turn on the EL zone, the amount of luminance on the actor's right cheek is equal to the left cheek. As we look at all of the references today, it's important to recognize the settings of each scene. The majority of Ted Lasso takes place in a very high key setting. They're either outdoors on a sunny football field or inside a brightly lit locker room. It's also very important to recognize the overall tone of the show. Ted Lasso is a very family-friendly, warm show. Therefore, they've matched the tone with the lighting. However, as you'll see in our next example, which is a two to one contrast ratio, sometimes even a creepy film can be high key lighting. An example of this is Midsommar. A two to one is only a one stop difference between your key light and your fill. And as you may recall, the majority of Midsommar takes place in bright day exteriors. And from what I understand, they lit this movie all natural using 20 by 20 ultra bounces and unbleached muslins. And by studying this reference image with the EL zone, we can see the right side of the face is one stop over. So even though this is technically a horror film, they stay true to the reality of the setting that the movie takes place in. And in doing so, it actually adds to the overall creepiness. Having this two to one ratio while disturbing things are going on was a refreshing juxtaposition. Just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and plant choreography and a bespoke song, we should stop by. So cool. Next is a four to one. So now the key light is four times as bright as the fill. Our example for this is Barbie. And this specific reference image may be misleading because she is wearing a hat. But as soon as we turn on the EL zone, we can instantly see that her right cheek is two stops over her fill. And they're doing this by giving her a little bounce of up light to get up under her hat on her key side. So by now you should be noticing the pattern of when these lower contrast ratios are used. So far, all of these references have been bright high key situations. Hey there, handsome, you want a date? We're finally getting to the good stuff. Let's keep it going with an eight to one or a three stop difference. This reference is from the holdovers. Now, sometimes these high key ratios may be hard to spot and differentiate between the three. But if you squint your eyes, you will really start to see these ratios present themselves or just turn on the EL zone and we instantly see where his key side is in fact three stops over. Now, before we start getting into the dark side, I need to ask you all a very important question. How are you organizing your gear? I use Cordbag, the sponsor of today's video. I love these Cordbag products and the company overall. The build quality is so damn surprising. In fact, I get a kick out of it just seeing the reactions from my filmmaker friends here in LA. Here's Steven Klaus checking out Cordbag for the very first time. Those are not your typical uh, no, gear bags. This is really great. They're really well constructed. That's really nice. Is the person nice and hefty? Yeah, and it's like uh, weather resistant the way. That... Oh, and it's got a it's got a nice utility hook on it. That's really nice. And here's the best part. He sent me a text the very next day showing me how he was using the cord bag products on a real world shoot. And he writes, P.S. I love this thing, dude. Such an upgrade from the janky zip bank coin purse I was using before. It doesn't get any more real world than that, folks. Cordbag is premium organizational tools for filmmakers. I've already done a full review on it. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. 
I absolutely love the cord bags and these new Y wraps are the perfect protection for my lenses and my monitors. But also for a brief time, their custom limited patches are currently back in stock and these puppies are not gonna last long. So check out the link below and be sure to use the code DOGTIMES to save 15% off your entire order. There's no one on God's green earth who is a greater enforcer of the laws of this land than Roy Tillman. Now let's migrate into the 16 to 1 contrast ratio. This is where we start getting a little bit more into moody cinematography, because now our fill is four stops under our key. This is a grab from the fifth season of Fargo, and you'll notice they're actually achieving this look during golden hour. Now at first glance, this reference could be a little misleading because their edge light is competing with their key. But when we turn on the EL zone, we do see that his left cheek is in fact four stops under his right cheek. I think this is a great example of using a darker contrast ratio in a day exterior setting. The important thing isn't can you read music, it's can you hear it. Can you hear the music, Robert? Yes, I can. Moving on to a 32 to one, which is a five stop difference. And this is probably the most popular by today's standards. And that is why this reference is from the already legendary Oppenheimer. And with the EL zone, you can see his fill side is in fact five stops under his key. Now, the larger your contrast ratio gets, the more critical you have to be. It takes a lot of finesse and experience to pull this look off without it looking too crushed or too overly lit. A look like this outdoors requires a ton of control with the proper use of flags and modifiers. And the surprising thing about this image is that it is a day exterior. I hope that you all can appreciate the reality of the size of the crew that you would need to master this level of nuance. All right, now let's turn it up a notch and go straight to jail. Right to jail, right away. I didn't kill that kid, Ralph. Now we're getting a little more nuanced with a 64 to one ratio, where the fill is now six stops under the key. This is a grab from one of my all time favorite shows, The Outsider. I don't even really think it's that great of a story. I'm just more in love with the cinematography of this show. And as the EL zone reveals, his fill side starts at six stops under and just completely falls away into darkness. They didn't even bother to put an edge light on this guy. They just said, let it ride. And I mean, it makes sense. He is in jail. It's not exactly rainbows and unicorns. This is the exact opposite of Barbie. All right, now we've ventured beyond and entered the depths of 128 to one contrast ratio, where there is a seven stop difference between the key and the fill. And for this reference, it is yet again Oppenheimer. And I chose this again because the nuance and the integrity of the story is so important to the lighting. Now, as you can recall from the movie, you know what this scene is. If you haven't seen Oppenheimer, shame on you, you should watch it immediately. But just to recap, he is in this little tiny room being interrogated at a crucial moment. Fun fact, this was actually shot on location because he wanted the actor to actually feel like he was in a little tiny spot. And he's only being lit by one tiny window off to the side. Meanwhile, his fill side is literally seven stops under the key side. You look at this image and it's like looking at yin and yang or a literal two-face. If you know the story of what's going on here, you know that this man is literally conflicted between his morals, his actions, his decisions. His life has been sliced down the middle, much like the lighting. Now, some people might say it's bougie to dissect the lighting like this, but the reality is the professional filmmakers that are making all the hit movies that we all literally pay money to watch are using the lighting and these exact contrast ratios to fuel the emotions that we all feel. And the reality is to non-industry folks, good lighting goes completely unnoticed because it is a component, a piece of the puzzle that enters your subconscious. Your average audience member will never notice all the technical things that you and I are looking out for. They don't care about contrast ratios. Quite honestly, they should never be thinking about the lighting. But for you and I, the creators of the image, we need to absolutely care because it's through these contrast ratios that we're able to tap into the audience's psyche. Otherwise, we're just making dark images for the sake of making dark images because we go, oh man, I love the way the Batman looked. Let's all emulate that and make a YouTube video about it. But the reality is we should be dissecting and analyzing the script. There's a lot of YouTubers out there trying to tell you all how to light a scene and be a real filmmaker, but yet none of them have any real credits on IMDb. They don't even exist on that platform. So it's no wonder to me that none of them are talking about the script. Everything we do as filmmakers 
should be dictated by the words on the page. Because those words in the script are not just there for the director and the actor, they're there for the entire crew. The script is literally the blueprint. So know your contrast ratios, know when to use which ratios, and your filmmaking will improve immensely. It's the exact reason why Hollywood's been doing it for decades. And it's why I've been talking about it on my Patreon for the past 220 videos. So check us out over there at patreon.com slash justinphillip. That's where I spill all the tea in my pure, unhinged, chaotic glory. For now, that is a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for the support. If you did, please guys, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Little channels like mine are dying by the dozen. For now, that is a wrap. All right, that's it, guys. We got it. Fucking hell, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You overcook chicken, also jail. Undercook, overcook. You make an appointment with a dentist and you don't show up, believe it or not, jail, right away. We have the best patients in the world because of jail. <laughs>